Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're going to take a look at Select and Mask. Select and Mask is a wonderful tool, but you need to use it a lot of times in conjunction with a selection tool. When we head over here into the lasso tool, the lasso has a feather built into it. Now, if we drop down to the quick selection tool, you'll notice there's no feather available in the quick selection tool. So if I come up here and I make a quick selection, there's no feather. The only way to add a feather is to go into select and mask. And a lot of times you need to add a feather so you don't get a hard edge and it doesn't look horrible. Now this kind of depends on whether you're trying to cut something out or if you're simply just trying to make a selection and then make an adjustment mask. So what we're gonna do is take a look at how select and mask works. So the first thing that you can see right here is when you're trying to make a selection with select and mask, it needs to be able to see a contrast difference. Here where the values in the hair and the background are very similar, as we go over this, it has a difficult time distinguishing where the end of the subject is, where if we come in here to the shirt, it's seeing that a whole lot better in the subject than it is in the hair. Messed up here a little bit. Why? Because those values are starting to become the same. Now, if we come over here to this image, it's going to have a much easier time reading where the edge of the subject is. Why? Because there's a color and contrast difference, and it makes it really easy to pick out the subject. We're going to come up here and take a look at select subject. Now, select subject is great when you have a strong contrast in your image, and it doesn't just have to be for hair selection. It can be for any sort of selection. We'll see in a second over here. We're going to come select this out as well. So I'm just going to simply click select subject and Photoshop's basically going to do a pretty good job of selecting it out. So just so you know, when you are trying to select out hair, the more in focus your hair is, the better Photoshop is going to be able to do at selecting it. The more out of focus, the more difficult time it's going to have at selecting that hair. So we have selected this subject. Now, a couple issues are gonna arise from this image. One is because we have a red background and you will see that in a second, but we're gonna come up here and hit select and mask and we are inside the select and mask panel. Now, I have the view as overlay, which shows a red background. This red is redder than the other background, but I'm gonna have a difficult time distinguishing where I need to make the selection at. So what we're gonna do is first come up to the view mode and you will see we have a whole bunch of different ways to view this and each one has a quick key. So I'm going to click on onion skin. Now onion skin is showing us where that old red background is. And that's a very helpful because now I can see where I need to take that out of the image. We have marching ants overlay, which we just saw on black, on white, on black and white and on layers. So we're going to use onion skin, click off that. We also have the ability to show edge, show original, and high quality preview. Now I'm not gonna select any of those. We also can change the transparency level. So this is the transparency level. So if I increase this, it's making it more transparent. And if I bring it back down this way, it's gonna make it less transparent. What we need to see is the area that we need to select. On the left-hand side over here, we have our quick selection tools. The first one is simply just the selection brush. So we have the quick selection brush. So if I want to subtract this green, I can either hit minus up here, just hold my alt key, and I can come down here and say, hey, I don't want to select that, and it's removing that from the selection. If I want to add it back, I can paint back over it, and it's going to add that to the selection. No, I don't want to do either one of those, so we're just going to go back in time. We are good to go. The next thing that we have is the hair selection tool. Now we're gonna come back to hair selection tool in just a second. Next, we have the brush tool. So let me make my brush bigger here. And I'm simply just gonna brush into this area right here and it's bringing that area back. If I want to remove that, I can go to minus or hold the alt button 
and I can paint over that and it's going to remove it from the area. So if you didn't want to make the selection in the quick selection tool, you could actually make all your selections right in here inside of select and mask as well. We have the lasso tool and the lasso tool works just like the lasso tool did before, except for notice that we don't have a feather. We have the move tool and the zoom tool. Next thing we're going to go into here is this brush back up here. This is your hair selection tool. Now this is hair selection, but you can use it for more than just selecting hair as we will see. If we scroll down here, we notice we have something called edge detection. If you don't see edge detection, you're simply going to click on that. And the first thing we have is a manual adjustment, meaning we are manually adjusting the radius of how this is going to be applied. I'm not going to use the manual radius. I'm going to use smart radius. So we're going to let Photoshop figure it out for itself. And we're going to simply just kind of zoom in here to one. We'll look at this area right here. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. It's a little bit hard to see actually. Now I'm trying to make my brush just a little bit bigger than the area I'm trying to take out. I don't want to make it too big. I don't want to make it too small, but you do need to constantly adjust this. And then I'm simply just going to paint over this red area because that is the area that I want to remove. And you can see Photoshop analyzed it and was able to take that out of the image. Once again, we're going to remove that. There's a little here on his glasses. A little here. Photoshop is analyzing that. I'm going to simply hold the space bar down and that's going to allow me to quickly move. Now I need to make my brush a little bit bigger because as we get up here, the area is quite a bit bigger that we need to look at. And I'm simply just painting over these areas and it's analyzing and taking all that red out of the image. This is your hair selection brush. Now remember, it's going to have a difficult time on some of these areas where it's not in focus. You can see right here, I know it took too much out. So we're going to come over here and then just simply paint over this area. Now right here in his glasses, there's no actual background in there. It's actually picking up the reflection of the red background. This is something that happens a lot inside of the image. You can see there's a red cast on this side of his face. That is a color reflection. So the light is hitting the background and then reflecting back on our subject. We can sort of remove that, but it's a good idea, especially if you're using a green screen or a colored background to keep your subject back away far enough from it so that they don't get affected by that. I can also see right here, we have a little beard. So we're gonna make our brush much smaller and we're gonna just kind of paint over that and see if Photoshop can remove that area pretty good. So that way we keep the beard, but we get rid of horrible selection. If we scroll down here to the end, notice we have something called decontaminate colors. That's for this contamination of the red hitting the background. It is not perfect. The best thing you could do is to photograph the image so you don't have this. I'm gonna go ahead and select decontaminate colors, and that's gonna help remove some of this red cast that we see on the face. I can control how much of that is applied by moving this slider. In this case, we're just gonna turn it off for right now. We're just gonna leave it in there. The next thing that we have to go to is how do we want to output this image? So we've cut this out. In my case, we have as a selection, as a layer mask, meaning it's just gonna apply a layer mask to that old selection, new layer, new layer with mask, new document or new document with mask. In this case, we're just gonna use new layer with mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And you can see it's got a new layer with a mask and we have selected our subject out. And remember, this red is a reflection on his glasses. It doesn't look good, we'll need to remove that. But as far as the selection being pretty good, is it perfect? No. It did a pretty good job of cutting that hair out and giving us a nice mask to start with. Now, one of the issues that we have is when you're doing a mask, a lot of times the hair selection mask doesn't work so good on the edges. We've got this kind of red contaminated color with this jaggy edge. So what we're gonna do is go down here to this background layer and I'm gonna turn this top layer off. Make sure this is selected. And once again, I'm gonna grab that quick selection tool, but I'm just gonna grab and select his sweater and we will zoom out to make sure we got it out. And so that's good. I don't care about this area. 
We can get rid of that. All I care about is the sweater in this case. We're gonna come back up here and select and mask. And now we're gonna see the second part of the selected mask options that we have. When you're just doing a regular selection, you're not gonna be using the hair or edge detection tools. You're gonna be using these global refinement tools. And right here, we have smooth. Now you don't usually wanna use smooth until after you've used feather. Feather is just like feather and anything else we have. It is feathering the edge to help blend it in. Now you can see we still got some gray out there. If I want to smooth the edge, I can apply smoothing and that's gonna smooth that edge. If I want a harder edge, and sometimes you do want a harder edge, I can increase that contrast of that edge and that's going to give us a harder edge. In the next thing, we're gonna use some contrast to give us a harder edge. And we'll slide this back. Then my favorite is to shift the edge. So right here where we have this gray, we actually wanna just shift this edge in a little bit this direction and this direction. By grabbing this slider and going to the left, and I'm gonna go a lot, you're gonna see this edge shift from here into here. So we are shifting that edge so that we get rid of that outer area. If I make this selection go out here, it's moving that selection this way. Now we're getting that red background. So we just want to shift that edge in about 20 or 25 percent. And we're trying to get rid of this area right here. I'm going to shift that in just a little bit more. And that's hopefully going to give us a better selection. In this case, I don't want a new document. We're just going to add a layer mask to that. Let's have OK. And now we have two different images. Now we're getting this hard edge. You can see this is what it looked like before. And then if I turn that off, you can see now our edge is a whole lot better. There's a little bit of color cast, but we can go in there and clean that up. What's cool is now we combine this selection and this selection together to give us a really nice composite. What we would do here is I'm going to come up here to this selection. I'm going to grab my brush tool and some black. And we're simply just going to paint over the edge of this image. Now I messed that area up a little bit. That's okay. You can just white to resolve that. So now we have a combination of that selection and this selection together. Is it perfect? No. Could we refine it more? Yes. So all you would need to do is go down here into this selection. You can zoom way in and grab your brush tool in the color black because we want to remove that. So I'm going to hit X. Now, when you're doing a really accurate selection, you need a harder brush and a smaller brush. And that will allow you to come in here and just remove that color cast or that edge fringing or anything that you want. If I wanted to come in a little bit and get rid of that, I could do a nice job of just coming down and making that selection. So anything that you would wanna do, you can come, always come in and refine it. I think this brush actually needs to be a little bit smaller to be accurate. Now this does take a long time and you need to be accurate. And don't worry if you mess up, you can always flip your colors to white, paint that back in. That's one of the great things about masks. You can never really ruin them. You can just keep applying them in different directions. So you can see we're removing it there and keeping it here. So once again, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna grab and do it for a completely different image. Not sure what happened. All right, so we've got this picture of this building. So we're gonna come over to the quick selection tool, hit select subject. It's automatically gonna select our subject for us. We're gonna hit select and mask. That's brought us in here to select and mask. I'm going to change it back to overlay so I can see the red of where everything is. I'm going to take my shift edge and I'm going to move that back so we don't actually want that on this image. We want just our natural selection. However, I am going to use the hair. And this is interesting. So once again, we're going to hit smart radius. I'm going to make my brush about the same as the area that I want to select. And we're going to try to get this smoke. See if it will pick it up. And it's doing a pretty good job of picking up that smoke and adding it to the selection. I will simply zoom in here. And we can see we have a soft edge here. Now we have a architectural building. We don't want a softly blended edge because the building is going to look weird. So we're going to remove that feather. 
Now you can see we've got a really nice edge. You could add a little bit of feather. We could shift this edge in just a hair, like 1%. And if I wanted to increase the contrast, that will give that a harder edge. And now we will come in here and output. This is a new layer with a mask. You can see just like that, this has done a wonderful selection on the building. It's got a little kind of grayness onto this, but I think with some blending modes, we can easily make that look realistic. So that's how you use select and mask inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.